What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today I am probably getting my eyes worked on, but we do still have a video for you. Today we're going to be showing you how to set up Hive OS to mine Ravencoin. Now, once again, this is not me pumping Ravencoin or saying that it's going to go anywhere. I do how to's and technical reviews. That is it. Trade, decide what to mine, hold whatever you decide. Is best for you but without further ado here's a word from our sponsor the following is a paid advertisement prime xbt is an established trading platform that was founded in 2018 and remained in business through the bear market for my personal research there are three main reasons they set themselves apart from other trading platforms high leverage low fees and most importantly privacy Prime XBT requires no user information to start trading. The newest module called Covesting allows users to copy the trading activity of other users. Remember, any form of investing comes with significant risks, so do your own research. Use promo code SONOFATECH at sign up for a 50% bonus. Welcome back. So it's pretty simple to set this up. This should be a pretty quick guide. All you really have to do is set up another flight sheet. Now, there are some decisions to be made when we are talking about a mining pool. Currently, B pool has the most hash rate, which is in China, and then two miners is a close second, which does have US servers, so we'll be using them as an example. But it is curious that they are only PPLNS. In fact, pretty much every pool is PPLNS. There is a PPS plus option on B pool, but the rest of them are pretty much PPLNS. I don't see a PPS plus option currently for the US and that may be an idea that somebody wants to get on. I'm looking at you, Dane. All right, so before we get into it, let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions for two miners. Two miners here will have your USA ports, European ports, and Asian ports. Now it is recommended that you use Rave OS to avoid fees if you're going to be mining Ravencoin. So we will be getting a how-to out for that. However, this is a specific request by you guys to basically swap over from Hive OS mining ETH to Hive OS mining, of course, Ravencoin and then specifically for NVIDIA GPUs. So over here I have an NVIDIA 3000 series running. We have it ready to go. And the first thing we're going to want to do is click flight sheets. Now in the flight sheets, this one's pretty simple because they already have Ravencoin as the coin. Now for a wallet, you'll need to click add wallet and paste in your wallet address here and name it whatever you like. That being said, if you guys need to learn how to set up a wallet, please check out my How to Mine Ravencoin on Windows 10. In the beginning of that video, we talk about how to basically set up a Ravencoin wallet that is not in an exchange. If you need an exchange, however, currently the only one that doesn't have any blocks based on geographical locations that also has Ravencoin available is going to be on tradeogre.com. And if you guys need a guide on how to use tradeogre.com, please let me know in the comment section below and I will prioritize that separately as well. So once you've obtained your address, either by watching the video earlier or at this point, I have already done a how to use the tradeogre.com video, then you're gonna type in the address here and you will be good to go. For me, I currently already have a Raven wallet set up. And then we're going to select the two miners pool and we are going to check the boxes for our geographical location, which is going to be the US. Now there is a US high diff. I highly advise against that unless you have a ton of hash power. There is also, of course, the solo pool from two miners and maybe we can do a test on that at some other time. Your next step is going to be selecting the miner. For NVIDIA GPUs, I highly recommend T-Rex Miner. And then if you are looking at doing AMD GPUs, we can probably talk about it later, but I have been using Team Red Miner. Okay, so at this point, we are going to just name it T-Rex, let's say hardware wallet, and let's say two miners. Just so I know which one it is, I'm gonna click create flight sheet. At this point, we are gonna go back to our workers. And if you're switching off ETH, you probably wanna go into the cards and turn off all overclocks. 
I just go through and remove all of them like this just to stay safe, make it easier to start overclocking afterwards. Okay, so we'll just wait for all of these to complete and then we will change the flight sheet. Back on the farm, we have basically determined that all of the settings have been applied. So now at this point, we are going to move forward with changing the flight sheet. From the workers tab, we will click the checkbox for the SOAT test rig. We will go up to select flight sheet and we will find the new flight sheet that we just created, which should be called something like T-Rex hardware wallet to miners. We'll select it and click apply. And at this point, we will wait for the rig to apply that. In some cases, you need may need to reboot the rig, which you can do with this power action button with the reboot here. And we will see if it takes over or we if we need to change something. Another thing you can do is always go up to the hive shell and start it so that you can go ahead and take a look at the actual command line and see if the miner is running. Okay, so after the rig config has been applied, you can see here that we are now mining Ravencoin. The 3070s are getting 26 mega hash a second, and the 3060 Ti is getting almost 26 mega hash a second, with of course the 3080 here getting 44.5 mega hash a second. For overclocks, a quick starting point is to hit the overclock button and say popular presets. You will then check out the Ravencoin option and it will select the algorithm and then give you essentially some options for overclocking. In this case what you can see here is that a lot of people are still underclocking the volt the core and overclocking the memory. Here it says for the 3070s that they are at 150 power limit. This one is cranked up a little bit higher with the memory at 2500 and then the power limit at 120. I'm pretty comfortable with the 140 power limit personally, and we still need to do some more overclocking tests on each one of these, of course. So if you guys are interested in overclocking the 3070s, the 3060 Ti's, and the 3080s, on Ravencoin, let me know and we will do some individual testing to get you going. Outside of that, it's not as memory intensive as Ethereum, so you're not going to see the big boost that you do out of Ethereum for overclocking the memory overclock. So I actually am not really that big of a fan of a majority of these overclocks, to be frank with you. Uh, for me, I would probably do like 110 on the core clock, start there, start with 2000 on the memory, and then 140 watts. And let's go ahead and see how that applies out here on that one. We would probably also do the same on the 3060 Ti, and we will go ahead and see how that applies out really quick. And then for the 3080, I would pretty much start around the same thing, 110, and then we would do about 2000 on the memory clock. And then we would do uh, about two, 240 on this one, more than likely. So we'll apply that and see how that comes out. Oops, we messed up on the memory clock here. So let's go ahead and pump that in. And as you can see, once it applied to the 3060 Ti, we went a little bit up about one mega hash a second with the 110, 2000, and 140. So, you know, right around there is probably going to be good. I think that uh, we can definitely tweak it in more. So if you guys want to go into a deep dive and then kind of pick my brain on how I do this overclocking, let me know. I prefer to start on a Windows machine personally and then move up from there. And then I already have an idea of what the cards will do and I can get kind of a base overclock in. We could probably pump these up. Look at me. I keep saying we'll do a deep dive. <laughs> We will definitely have to do a deep dive on the 3080, but I think we're pretty close here. I bet it's going to be like 2100 on that. Let's take a look. I'm going to bump all of these up to 2100. See if we get anything extra out of it that way. It does appear that with Kapow, we are getting a little bit more benefit out of the memory overclock. We actually lost hash rate on the 3080, so we're going to go ahead and up this power limit to 280 and see if that's what was limiting it. 
more than likely that is what's limiting it because everything else was turned up higher. And yeah, the 3060 appears to take off pretty good with 2100 megahertz at 140. We are at 28.67 mega hash a second. And I am getting the feeling that the 3070s need more power as well. So we're going to go ahead and try to bump it up to 150 at first. Kapow is a very power hungry algo here. We're going to go ahead and remove a power limit for one of them just so we understand what the full potential of the GPU is. You can see that the 3080 has come back up at almost 50 mega hash a second and that's pretty awesome. I think that uh, that's going to be looking pretty dang good. We'll have to see if we can get that higher. And I'm just going to give it one tad to give myself an idea of where the 3070s could potentially be at if we removed the power consumption all of the way. Okay, so taking up about 220 watts, it does appear that essentially it'll go to about 30 mega hash a second. I have a feeling then we want to remove it from the power limit here. And then we want to remove the power limit here as well to get an idea of how high the potential hash rate would be. And this is what happens when you're a mining nerd and you start doing something and <laughs> playing with it. You keep saying, we'll do the overclogging later, but what do you do? You do it now. All right, let's go ahead and get you guys an idea what the max potential for these are. It looks like the 3070s will go up to 30 mega hash a second at about 220 watts. So we'd wanna start the limit at 210 watts and tick down until the hash rate starts to drop, essentially. Now with the RTX 3060 Ti, we did not go above the 28.95 mega hash and we are at 240 watts. That does mean, however, the good news is, is that 140 on the power limit was good to go and spot on. The limit on the RTX 3080 we know can go at least down to 280 and maybe even further. And then at this point, we also know that we can start ticking down this by about 10 at a time. We're gonna start at 200, start with going down by 200 and seeing how that applies out. It's been limited to 200 now and we stayed at 30 mega hash a second. So we're gonna go ahead and drop by 20 again down to 180. We know that at 150, it started dropping its hash rate. So we're trying to find that perfect medium at this point. It has dropped down to 180 and the hash rate remains consistent. So we can probably drop down to 160 and take our final shot at the lowest possible on the 3070s. And then we are gonna refresh. Well, we'll wait for the overclock to go. The overclock is applied. So we're gonna go ahead and refresh. And we are still at 30 mega hash a second at 160 watts. We know at 150, we drop below 30 mega hash a second. So for this particular 3070, it looks like we are at 160 watts. We're gonna go ahead and verify that by applying it to the rest of our 3060s, or 3070s, excuse me. And then we are gonna start dropping the power consumption on the 3080 by 20. Looks like we did hash, drop hash rate at 260, so we're gonna go ahead and try 270 on the, thir on the 3080. And I think locked in for sure, what I'm seeing here so far is going to be 110 on the core and 2100 on the memory and 160 watts for 30 mega hash a second on Ravencoin for the RTX 3070. We are looking at the same overclock numbers for the 3060 Ti with a power limit of 140, putting it in at 28 mega hash a second. And we are looking at 280 for the peak performance to get us into 49 for the 3080. We pretty much nailed it in with that 280 guess right off the bat. Who would have known? So there you go. There's how you mine Ravencoin with Hive OS. And there's a little bit of an overclocking guide for the RTX 3070, 3060 Ti, and obviously the 3080. Now, uh, we will have to tweak these in more and more and more and more. 
I'm sure there are better overclocks out there and it will also depend on the quality of the GPU, the thermal pads and so forth. If you are having any sort of issues with not obtaining these hash rates, make sure you check your thermal pads. If you are getting better hash rates, please understand that I just did this in this video, so we will definitely be tweaking it. But this looks like a good starting point for Ravencoin on these GPUs. Thanks for watching and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.